Actually, hold that thought. I'm grabbing some water. <laughs> <clears throat> I'll be right there. <clears throat> okay, hi, three people have joined. I was grabbing some water, sorry about that. <clears throat> Lily, no, I haven't seen any of the Olympics yet. Well, I've seen a tiny, tiny, tiny little thing. Uh, my husband's been posting because history has been made this year because this is the first year ever. Hi, Violin. Hey, Chat Noir. This is the first year ever that skateboarding is now considered an Olympic sport. Now, my husband has been skateboarding since he was... 13 or 14. Hey, Brittany. Hey, Karen. Good morning. So when I used to watch the Olympics, hey, Vias. Hey, uh, is it Brahma? Roshan? Yeah, the 2020 Olympics is going on this week, I guess. <clears throat> Good morning, Orly. Hey, James. Hey, the funny editor. Swami, or no, Sa Swami, oh, I'm sorry if I butchered your name. Hey, Angela. Hey, is it Cat BB? <clears throat> I'm doing well. Hi, Lonely Dragon. <clears throat> Pro 100 YT. Good morning. So uh, when I used to watch the gymnastics, I used, uh, gymnastics. When I used to watch the Olympics, I would watch gymnastics. No, Timmy, no. You have to put a shirt on. You're not coming on here without a shirt on. Oh, Tommy. Thank you. <clears throat> Let's have some respect. You're not at the beach. Okay, hi, Hannah. Hi, NY Estolfo. <laughs> uh, some of you guys need to have easier names. <laughs> okay, so Lily's saying Australia will be holding the Olympics. When is that? Good morning, Loretta. Good morning, is it Alaya? Hey, Master J. Good morning. <clears throat> so are you violini? I'm not sure what you're asking me. Oh, or am I a violinist? No, I don't play any instruments. Um, a little bit in high school, I played a coronet. That's like a kind of a smaller version of a trumpet. Um, Brittany says, I have my daughter, Natalie, watching with me here this morning. She just turned 12 yesterday. Guys, show her some love. Happy birthday, Natalie, 12. What an epic year. You know what? This is going to be your best year yet. Timmy, you want to come wish Natalie a happy birthday? She just turned 12. Yeah. Timmy. Happy, happy birthday, Marlene. Natalie. Marlene, happy birthday, Marlene. Also, this last year is sponsored by Reese's Puffs. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not sponsored by Reese's Puffs. Here you can see Crayon Beans marketing. So, so Timmy comes to me. So he's somehow obsessed with Reese's now. So he comes to me this week and shows me the back. Mom, look at this epic creativity. I said, no, Timmy, that's not creativity. That's marketing. They're not showing you how creative you are. They're showing you that you can eat Reese's on your pizza. You can eat them one at a time as a snack. You can eat them on your toast and you can eat them on a shake. I said, sweetheart, that's not creativity, that's marketing. They're showing you that these isn't just for breakfast anymore. You can eat them multiple times a day and then they can sell more. So sweetheart, that's not creativity, that's marketing in a creative way. Lessons. Lessons we're teaching them. <laughs> okay, Piper says, I am new to Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Uh, praise the Lord me, please. I am a human God and I'm fake. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> uh, okay. Hi, Timmy. You're Natalie's fan. She's addicted to you on Roblox. She says to check out her friend request. 
Okay, what is what is her what is her name on there so he can he's gonna go look right now? What is Natalie's name on Roblox? Let me know. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Lily says, how about this video can be sponsored by Darman? <laughs> well, <laughs> don't spit. <laughs> don't spit. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's see. She's just so sweet. No problem. Thank you for responding to me on Instagram. I really appreciate it. I fall behind on my messages sometimes. Um, it takes like four hours a day if I'm going to respond to all the messages. And it's I do, a lot of times I don't have time. So if, if you get a message from me... <laughs> it's quite miraculous. Do you know this guy from Bendy and the Infancy? So Lily says she's going to be watching the swimming on Olympics. Violin asks me what time it is in California. It's a little after 8 a.m. Hey, Kathleen. So I don't know if you guys saw what I'm what I named today's. Um, hey, Hannah. What I named today's live. I think I called it. Can you still bless someone? if you are depressed. Oh, uh, Timmy, her username is Flower Lee. F-L-O-U-R-A-L-I-E. Why down, why down, why down? Huh? Why down? Uh, that's her name on, on in Roblox if you wanna look for her and add her. She sent you a friend request. Okay, oh, thank you, NY. Uh, can we all appreciate how she takes her time to reply to everyone? <laughs> Lily's a fan of Michael Phelps. Can you be a blessing even if you're depressed is the name. Thank you. So, as you guys know, I like to get a little starter going before we get into the Q&A and do a little, you know, I don't know if it's really a teaching point, but I like to bring up something we can all think about and maybe put into practice. So, um, it's 7, 10 p.m. here in Dubai. So, I found this little ditty in Poems with Power to Strengthen the Soul. And it made me ask that question, can you still be a blessing to someone if you're depressed? So I found this little stanza. It's just four lines. Don't know what it's called. Don't know who wrote it. It's anonymous. Oh, Elena, you just are such an amazing blessing to me. Thank you. Elena just popped up with 50 bucks. Thank you, you're so sweet. Um, wow, I'm humbled. So let me just uh, just read these four lines and then ask you guys more about this because I know what it's like to be depressed and some of you may know what it's like to be depressed. Hannah, what, what uh, country are you in? <clears throat> Coloring with Lauren, I'm doing great. So I'm gonna just read these four stanzas and then we'll talk about it for a little bit. And then you guys can let me know your thoughts on it. All right, <clears throat> Brittany says, yep, depression is real, I get it. Okay, oh blessed is that man of whom some soul can say, he was an inspiration along life's toilsome way. So they're saying, you're going to be blessed. If you're the person who can be an inspiration in life to other people, a well of sparkling water, a fountain flowing free forever like his master in tenderest sympathy. So blessed is the man of whom some soul can say. It doesn't say everybody in the world has to think you're inspirational. It's saying you will be blessed if Someone can say that you were an inspiration Mom. along life's toiling way. Hold on, Timmy. I'm, hey, I'm, in, the, I'm in the middle of a thought. Hey, mommy, um, what's, what's your username again? F, look for F-L-O-U-R. Floralite, Floralite. Just look, see who's giving you a request. Who's, uh, just it starts with F-L-O-U-R. Just, just look just, for those. Just wind down, okay? Okay, I'll write it down in a minute. She'll, she'll tell me again. Okay, so Timmy, you're just moving the stand. So if, if someone can say that you were an inspiration along life's toilsome way, it doesn't mean you have to be an inspiration to everybody in the world, that you have to be this big influencer on the internet. But if someone can say, you know what? These, this, this girl really blessed me. This guy really blessed me. This, per, this person, they were an inspiration to my life. You know, it really only takes 
it takes making a difference with one person. You know, I mean, just a lot of you guys are here because of Dar Man. So he's he's inspiring millions of people, right? But here's what we soon forget: who was the person who inspired Dar Man? to do what he's doing. So sometimes we feel like, oh, well, because I'm, nobody knows about me or I'm not making a big difference. But what if you're the person who led somebody to inspiration and they now inspire all kinds of people? Okay, be careful, sweetheart. I don't want you to fall. <clears throat> So that difference you make for one person, I think of the two or three mentors that I've had along the way who encouraged me to put my work out there, to put my poetry out there, to, to share what I had to say. Without those couple people, um, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. And I, there's a lot, a lot of stuff I wouldn't be doing because I had no confidence. I didn't believe in myself. I didn't think I had anything to offer. I didn't think I was worthy. I didn't think anyone would want to hear from me. And the list goes on and on. But there was one person who was an inspiration along life's toilsome way. A well of sparkling water, a fountain flowing free. Forever like his master in tenderest sympathy. I had people in my life, one especially in particular, who would sit with me and let me cry to him and, and he would encourage me and I would show him my poetry and I'm like, it's not very good. I don't think anybody would ever want to read this. And, and he convinced me to share it with the world and let my voice out there. So I know this little four stanzas doesn't say anything about being depressed. That's something I wanted to add because a lot of times when we are down in the dumps, <clears throat> we're so inwardly focused on the pain we're feeling that we don't lift up our eyes and look around at other people who are hurting, at other people who are down in the dumps, and we don't always stop to think, you know what? How can I say a kind word to them? How can I bless them? How can I know I'm feeling down in the dumps? I know I feel crummy right now, but how can I make a difference to someone else? Even if I don't think I can, can I speak a kind word? Can I give some encouragement? Can I, you know, be that fountain of life? So I would love to hear your thoughts on that. Have you, have you noticed that when you're down in the dumps and you're feeling yuck about yourself and you've got so many issues and you're depressed, have you like stepped outside of that and gave some encouragement to someone else, and how did that change people? Yeah, Angela said she's do, she does it with her music. When she's feeling down in the dumps, she pulls someone else from their slump by putting her music out there. When I do that, my wallowing and pity moans are silenced because I realize I'm not alone. If I can help someone in pain, I have no reason to complain. Okay, <clears throat> so now I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. And also I'm going to get to some of your questions now. Hey, Sujal. All right, so if I missed it, retype it in. Okay, Colin says, what would you say to blasphemous people who are using God to justify putting others down? <clears throat> well, unless they're a very close friend of mine or a family member, I probably wouldn't say anything to them because that's between them and God. I'm, it's not my job to go around finding fault in everyone. It's not my job to point out what everyone else is doing wrong. I have to just pray for them and trust that the Holy Spirit is going to convict them, that God is going to convict them to start doing the right thing. Unless there's someone like directly, like if it's my child or if it's, you know, a close relative, um, <clears throat> then I don't, I don't, think I would say anything unless I felt the Lord was compelling me to do that. Uh, Ro the Rosalina fan said, did you inspire Dar Man? I don't know. I, I mean, he started this before I came on board. So is there something I may have done in my acting that, in, that possibly inspired him to write certain different 
roles for me or get, that might be possible but he was he was on this train doing this his thing before I came so maybe along the way I maybe gave him a little spark but I don't know he seemed to have he seemed to have it all already I know his fiance Laura <clears throat> she's really the one that got him to keep going when nobody was watching his stuff mm. Hannah says I am in Sri Lanka you asked me earlier. Okay. Andrea says, you are very inspiring, Kathleen. You, Catherine, you are underrated. More people should know about you. Well, spread the word. More The more the merrier. Hey, Isaac. Uh, Peppa asks, why do you have two different colored eyes? I was born that way. <clears throat> uh, Violin says, you're unique and special. Thanks for helping me. Nail said, my brother likes to make fun of me how I say words. You know what? Just ignore him. Who cares what he thinks of you? You know, I think I um I posted about that on Instagram about people making fun of you just yesterday or the day before. My manager, who, my previous manager, not the one I have now, he is the one that helped me more than anybody with my self-esteem. Um he passed away in 2019, God rest his soul. He was like the biggest influence on my life. But you know what he used to tell me all the time? You guys have to, you guys have to remember this. <clears throat> because one thing that I feel like trips us up more than anything in life is worrying about what other people think of you. So my manager, Marshall Ferguson Sr., used to say to me all the time, it is none of your business what other people think of you. So anytime someone is saying stuff about you, insulting you, putting you down, dude, and you're getting all worried and worked up about it, you have to remember it is none of your business what other people think about you. What other people think of you doesn't mean it's true. It doesn't mean you need to do anything about it. It just means it's their opinion. And somebody else's opinion, even if it's about me, is none of my business. Because most of the time, what people say about you is really just a reflection and a projection of what they think about themselves. I read a quote <clears throat> this week that said something like, I don't remember who said it, but it said something like, I don't worry when people hate me because most of those people don't even like themselves. And I have found that to be so true. The people that are the meanest, the people that are the rudest, the people that do the most put downs, those are the people who don't like themselves. Now you may think, <clears throat> well, that's not true because they've got everything going for them. They've got money, they've got popularity, they've got blah, blah, blah. But if, they're, if their whole thing is finding things to put down about others, there's something that's lacking in them and they're not happy. Have you noticed how happy people, they just go about their business. They're like live and let live. They don't, they don't worry about what other people are doing unless there's some deficiency in themselves. So when people are going around putting you down, just realize, wow, they're not happy. They're not complete. And then you realize their opinion doesn't really matter. Okay. So you are a very positive projection to me. Thank you, Mr. Anaconda. Uh, Peppa says, my grandma died earlier this year. I am so sorry. I, I, I was just talking to my friend yesterday about how many of my friends have died in the last year. And we counted and it's been seven people. Seven of my friends have died in the last year. Three of them were in their 70s. Four of them were in their 70s. Two of them were in their 60s. And one of them was in his 30s. <clears throat> okay. What do you need to be more at peace with yourself? Winnie, how about self-acceptance? How about loving yourself just the way you are? How about realizing you are doing your best and knowing that you're doing your best? You could, yes, it's, e it's easy to go, oh man, I wish I would have done the better. I wish I could have been better. At that. But if you, if you gave it your all and you did it with your heart and you did it with sincerity, 
then you need to you need to not be so hard on yourself and you need to say you need to say Winnie good job you need to look in the mirror you need to just take some time to look in the mirror every day and say I love you Winnie I love you you are doing the best you can under the circumstances that you've been through and the decisions you had to make, you made the best decision you could make at the time. I love you and I'm not going to be at war with you any longer. We are going to make a truce. We are going to be at peace. And you need to stare at yourself in the mirror and you need to keep saying I love you until you believe it. You know what? Sometimes we are our own worst enemy. It doesn't matter what other people say about us because we're harder on ourselves than anyone else is on them. Now think about this. You may be mad because somebody insulted you or somebody put you down yesterday, one time, they said something. But you, you put yourself down about 600 times more than that because you took their thought, you took what they said, and you replayed that insult over and over and over and over in your mind. So who's the real bully? Who's the real one doing the assaulting? Is it the person who said something to you once or is it you who keeps replaying that awful thing in your mind over and over? Is it really them that got you depressed or is it your thoughts chewing it on, chewing it and chewing it and believing it and letting it sink down to your soul. Guys, we have to guard our heart, right? The scripture says, guard your heart above all things for out of it springs the issues of life. How many of you guys have issues in your life because you didn't guard your heart? You let some attack, some fiery dart from the enemy, from the wicked one, from these people who are not godly, just Pew! Go right into your heart. You weren't holding up your shield of faith. You didn't have on your breastplate of righteousness. You didn't have your sword of the spirit, knowing who you are, knowing what the scripture says about you. So you weren't ready to fight back. You allowed what they said to seep into your soul. The person we need to make peace with is ourself. We like to place the blame on others and say, because they said this to me and they did this to me. And da, da, da. Now I'm, ugh. But the truth is, it's that person staring back at you in the mirror that you need to make peace with, right? And you need to not be so hard on yourself. <clears throat> Michelle wants to know how long you've been acting. Um, I have been acting um, over 20 years. And I started with Darman. This is my fourth year. I started in 2018. So Helena said, it's like you're looking into my soul. I was there and I think we're all there at some point. I was my own worst enemy. Brittany says, I remember you bringing up your course and thinking about breaking it into two parts. What did you decide? Are you leaving as it is? I am breaking it into two parts. Thank you for remembering that. Um, <clears throat> I decided it's going to be easier to manage that way. Um, people won't be overwhelmed by the volume of content rather than having like 22, 24 lessons. But the first one, I'm just going to put out 10 lessons. And by breaking it up in two, I'll also be able to charge less so more people will be able to access it. So the first level of my You Are Worthy course is going to be addressing the outer person. You know, the all the stuff that you see on the outside. I don't like this about me. I don't like this about me. I'm not smart enough. I'm not handsome enough. I'm not strong enough. I'm not rich enough. All the thoughts that you already think and all the stuff that already stops you from moving ahead in life. And... Um, on one of these sessions, maybe I'll bring like the syllabus of what I'm going to cover in each one. And in level two, um, we're going to do a deep dive into the soul and figure out how to change ourselves from the inside so we can really never have these unworthiness issues again. I mean, they go hand in hand. One's like covering the stuff that you already know is an issue 
And level two is gonna cover the stuff that you don't even know is what's holding you back and what's stopping you and the the battle between the soul and the the, the the battle for the soul between the spirit and the flesh, our fleshly desires and the tug of war that goes on when you guys know what it's like to want to do something good, but then you do something bad. You know, you got the angel and the devil and they're both whispering to you, do this, do this, do this and you're like, ah, and you, there's this tug of war. So I'm going to expose what that is and help you get some freedom around that and, and a lot of other areas. But yes, that's I decided to break it in two for that reason. Okay, I noticed in the recent Darman video where a student cheats on the English test, you were in the behind the scenes, but not in the actual video. Why is that, Vios asks. Um, well, from my understanding, their Darman Studios is going to be doing something new. Um, they're... I don't know all the details. I don't even know if I'm supposed to know this. Uh, but they're they're going to be, Dara's going to be putting out an app. And on this app, there's going to be extra bonus content and special extended scenes. So in that video you saw where the student cheats on his English test, I'm in the bonus extended scene. So apparently you're only going to be able to access this top secret bonus content and extended scenes on the app. I don't even know if the app's out yet. Well, if we're on, are you guys on Darman's email list? I'm on his email list. So he'll probably announce when the app is coming out. So that's why you saw me in the behind the scenes because I was there, but it was not in the official video. It was the rest of it. So Orly says, yes, Catherine, I take people's comments too far instead of letting it go. Yeah, and, that, and that's something we all have to work on to some extent. The easier you get at rejecting it, repelling it, letting it go. <laughs> it, it just reminds me of uh, this thing we used to say in, in, in grade school when someone would make fun of us. And we would say, I'm rubber and you're glue. Whatever you say bounces off me and sticks to you. Well, we need to actually become that rubber, right? We need to like be rubber so that whatever they say bounces off us and sticks to them. What if we could all be rubber? That, let's let that be our goal. Let's all try to be rubber this week. Keep that in mind. I'm rubber and you're glue. Whatever you say bounces off me and sticks to you. So when you're at work or you're at school and somebody says, you're not very talented, you're not very smart, you don't know what you're doing, you're not doing your job right, we let that bounce off us and we let it stick to them and we think to ourselves yeah they don't know what they're doing they're not very smart <laughs> we didn't say it they said it it's just bouncing back and sticking to them good morning from great wolf lodge okay mellow guys there needs to be a spam chat until she gets your comment nicole says i can do a bunny voice cool joshua says i it actually genetically comes from a parent who has heterochromia or it runs in the family. Heterochromia is a gene that a parent can pass on to a child. So both my parents have blue eyes. My brother has blue eyes. All my aunts and uncles have blue eyes. So I don't actually know where the hazel one came from, but I heard that I have a cousin I've never met that also has it. So. I'm not sure about that. Swami, I don't know who inspired Darman. Um, probably a few people along the way. Uh, the Rosalina fan says, is Cato from Darman and his brother your children? They look just like you. No, they're not my children. I think you saw my son here a little bit ago. I have two sons, um, and but only the little baby, only, who's three now, has been uh, in three Darman videos. Technically, you've only seen two of them because they reshot one of them. Um, if you saw my video here on YouTube called Eight Darman Videos I Was Supposed to Be In, you'll hear about why that one was not put out. <clears throat> okay. All right. Thank you, Derek. Says you're very inspirational. Via says, when will you work with Ayana Taylor again? They never tell us who we're working with. So... We never know till like the day before when we get the call sheet of who's going to be on the film. So Joshua said, I applied to Dar Man, but he's never responded. I was confused. Did you apply on the website? You know, they're probably, 
probably getting thousands of people applying every day. So don't feel bad. They have piles of stuff to go through. Rosalina said, you should tell your son that I'm autistic and I think he'd be able to relate to me. He's not in the room right now, but um, yeah. Which videos was Elijah in? I know he was in Woman Believes Her Prayers Don't Get Answered. And he was also in Husbands Addicted to Fortnite. <laughs> Mona says, I will always support you. Mona, I will always support you, CJ Eats says. Okay, the boys are doing well. Um, what are your thoughts on Hollywood being obsessed with younger actors and actresses <laughs> and then getting rid of them when they're old? Um, you know, it was very disappointing to me when I was following the Hollywood path. Um, and I actually wrote a book about it. I haven't put it out yet. I'm still working on it. It's kind of exposing what Hollywood is really like and all the people I've met along the way in Hollywood. And um, it's gonna be quite eye-opening. Maybe I'll put that out next year. The book you guys requested that I put out this year, so I gave you guys a choice on Instagram of what you want the next book I write to be. And the one that came in first place was the one about um, happiness and depression. So. That's what I've been working on in the very little downtime I have. And um, you put ho the Hollywood book as second choice out of the four options I gave you. Brittany says, I'm very interested in your course. If you could hear my life story, you would say, girl, you need this course. I'm still fighting an eating disorder and it's tough. I understand, Brittany, I do. I do understand, especially like people said, being in Hollywood, you had to be this big, and I've been fired from shows for being too fat. And I talk about this in my course, in level one, I tell you like the stuff that went down, my journey. And, and then I, I reveal to you how to get over it, how to make the separation between who you are, Brittany, who you really are, and the body you live in, because it's two separate things. And sometimes we allow ourselves to get down and depressed because we think we are this face that starts to sag or starts to get wrinkles, or we think we are this body that is not the perfect shape and it doesn't look like the hot Instagram models who frankly, most of the times are doing terrible things to their health to get to this state in this shape. So I, you know, I talk about how I finally got over hating the person staring back at me in the mirror. And I show you guys the trips, to, the, the tricks to do that, the tips to do that. And like, you know, the, the arrows that I said, let get into our heart that I'm giving away a bonus course called the divine solution. When you buy level one, I'm going to throw in a bonus course called the divine solution. And if you've got some pain, something in your life that's been hurting you for a long time and you don't know why, um, a lot of times it's because, oh, thank you for your gift, Angela. You're so sweet. It's because we haven't dealt with something deep down in our soul. So the example I use, which I'll just touch on here, it's like if you got a sliver in your hand. You guys know if you get a sliver and you don't do anything about it, it will start to get inflamed and it will fester and it will start to get infected. Well, we've let stuff get into our heart that we don't realize is in there. So, <laughs> oh, Elena, you guys are so kind. Thank you so much. So we, we let something get in there like a sliver and we see that it's red. Now you let stuff get in your heart and you see that it's hurting. So you try to cover it up. Like, well, maybe if I just starve myself slim or maybe if I just, um, have more money, or maybe if I get a boob job, or maybe if I do this and this, then I'll be happy about myself, then this pain will go away, then I won't feel so ugly, whatever it is. But it's like there's a sliver in your hand and you see that it's red, but instead of addressing the sliver, because maybe you don't even know it got in there, people say stuff to us and it gets in our soul and we don't always realize it at the time. So that's stuck in us. So we look at our hand and we put some cover up on it. We put some foundation on it so it doesn't look red anymore. Or if it gets really bad, maybe we wear gloves. That's the, that's the analogy I'm using. But we, it still hurts and we haven't dealt with the problem. So I'm gonna teach you a six step, 
um, the acronym is DIVINE, it's the DIVINE SOLUTION, the D-I-V-I-N-E, all stands for a step of how you can recognize, get rid of that sliver in your hand, in your heart in this case, so you can finally heal from the past and, and what's got you to that place. So I've been working on this course for three years. I wish I would have finished when I said I was gonna finish, but I just want it to pack all the punch it needs to pack and to do everything it needs to do for you guys so you can finally get some freedom. So you can love yourself just the way you are. So the purpose of this course is to give you the courage and the confidence so you can walk in any room and feel like you belong. No matter what you look like, no matter who else is in the room, you can feel like, you know what? I'm supposed to be here. And there's nothing that makes me any less than anybody else here. And I don't care if the room is filled with billionaires and movie stars, that you will feel right at place. That is what I really hope you get from it. Um, I could go on talking about this forever, but I won't. I'll, I'll eventually do um, like, I'll do a webinar telling you guys all about the course. I'll probably do the webinar like once in the morning and once at night so you guys can hear about it and then decide if you want to jump in. And I'll probably even have like a payment plan for those who don't have all the money straight out. So I hope that was helpful. Okay, so Jarrell asks, did the people who rejected you earlier in your acting career change their minds when you got famous? <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> I doubt it because they're superficial and they are they think a certain way. And honestly, the people in Hollywood, they don't even necessarily, wouldn't even necessarily think that the Darman series is, it, they would poo-poo it. Let's just say they would make fun of it and be like, oh, you're doing an internet show. You're not in the big movie theaters or you're not... You're not on an Emmy Award winning TV show. So that's just how they are. There's a lot of, there's a lot of poo poo. There's a lot of poo poo and yuck yuck in Hollywood. Oh, did you eat, did you finish your grapes? I think people want to say hi to you because they thought um, Cato and, and Brendan were my sons. So you saw my big boy and this is my little boy who, did you finish your grapes? No, you got a booger. Yucky. Oh, grapes are not yucky. Grapes are delicious. Let's get that booger. There we go. Okay. Oh, you want to get down. There you go. Okay. Uh, Hannah says, hi, Elijah. Oh, everyone's saying hi. Okay, let's see. <clears throat> Okay, uh, Lily said, I had cousins who nearly joined the World Championships and the Commonwealth Games in swimming. I can never be as good. Well, you know what? You Don't compare yourself to others. <laughs> You're too good for Holly Weird, <laughs> Frank says. Okay, let's see. Uh, Colin says, do you and Dar visit each other's homes? No, I've never been to his home and he's never been to mine. Although, guys, did you guys see the video I put out yesterday? Friday on the six top Karens I've played who are actually named Karens. Okay, so I'm going to do my best to put out a video related to Darman every two weeks. I'm going to try, but it might be three weeks. It might be four weeks, but I'm going to try to do it every two weeks. So you guys have been asking me for a house tour. I think one of the next Darman videos I'm going to put out is a house tour via Darman videos who were that were shot at my house. Does that sound like one you guys would be interested in? So I will show you the different videos that were shot here in what rooms in my house and tell you all that. Um, that's what I was thinking about doing because then, it, then it's like a combination of the Darman stuff you guys have been asking for and the house tour you guys have been asking for. Rather than just taking my camera and showing you this is my living room, this is my, I thought that would be more fun. So Angela says, awesome. Uh, Nicole, do you watch in Nickelodeon Name Sam and Cat? No, I've not seen that show. Brittany says, thanks, Catherine. I can't wait for it. I was diagnosed with an eating disorder when I was 16. I'm now 33. I'm so tired of dealing with the self-hate and the loud voice and, and the head in my, 
the voice in my head being so loud. Yeah, I think we all have that loud voice sometimes and we have to silence it and we have to replace it with good things. So sometimes we have to, in order to stop the thought, we have to say out loud the things that we want to be true that and the things that God says about us. So there's a way to switch to switch that and sometimes when you when you hear yourself going you're not good enough you're not thin enough you have to stop and say you know say your affirmation say what the scriptures have to say about you Brittany I would encourage you when you get off the live today to go look up um, what does God think about me how does God feel about me right type in scriptures for how God feels about me and you will find God says you're the head and not the tail. He says you're above only and not beneath. He says you are the apple of his eye. He says your name is written on the palm of his hand. And, the, and he says in, in um, Jeremiah, I know the plans that I have for you. They're for good and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. And if you just cling on to all the stuff God has to say about you, and when those evil thoughts come, you say what God has to say about you out loud, that's going to cut down and defeat that voice. Now, sometimes you're going to have to, initially, you're going to have to do it a lot. You're going to have to say it a lot. For instance, the church I used to go to for 17 years, um, the pastor's wife was a stunt woman in Hollywood. Well, she did stunts. She would fly out of cars and get punched out and fall down stairs and do stuff like that. She would be in f like fires and bombs and whatever, but she had a fear of heights. So one time she had to jump off this, I don't know, four, five, six, I don't know how high the story building was, but she was scared of heights, but that was her job that day. She clung on to the verse found in, I think it's 2 Timothy 1, 7, that says, God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. She had to say that verse like a thousand times that day before she had the courage and was able to jump off that roof onto the crash pad because she had such a fear of heights. So some of you guys, when you find the verses based on what you're dealing with, you may have to say them out loud a thousand times to defeat that voice, to defeat those thoughts that are taking you down. So just keep that in mind, but the more you do it, see, you've already planted the, the negative seeds. The thoughts have already been going in thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of times. So now you have to replace those thoughts. And the truth of the scripture, the truth of God's word can override the thoughts of the enemy because greater is he that is in you, God living inside you is greater than anyone in the world, any demonic stuff, any other people, any other thoughts. So it's your job to repeat repeatedly the right things, the righteous things. Okay, Nicole said, did you go to Legoland? I have been there twice with my older son. Joshua said, it's actually my dream to act or be a Dharman actor because his videos inspire me every day. And honestly, if I had one wish, it would become a Dharman actor. That's awesome. So... I don't know where you applied, but maybe maybe apply once a week. I don't know. The squeaky wheel gets the oil, right? So keep keep trying. And in the meantime, perfect your acting skills. Take your classes. Get your practice in every week. Because if they finally call you and you get your chance, you don't want to blow it if you don't do very good. So I would say... Now is the time to build up your muscles. Build up your acting muscles. Build up your expertise. Because, have you ever heard the saying, man's rejection is God's protection? What if they contacted you right away and had you audition and you weren't ready and you weren't very good? That would have blown your chance. So instead of looking at it as a negative thing that they haven't contacted you yet, how about you look at it as a positive thing that they're giving you more time to perfect your acting skills and get better so that when they finally do contact you, you can nail it, okay? So just trust that God's timing is the best timing. All right, can you please, please, please say my name, Rihanna. Hey, Rihanna, nice to have you here. Hey, Stacy. Okay, let's see. Vios asks, is it bad to snitch or tattletale on people like the janitor did in the recent video? Okay, that's not snitching or tattletaling. That's a serious issue. 
And when you're a teacher or a person of authority and you find illegal drugs, that's not snitching by having, by making the teacher aware of that because that's, you know, kids can, teenagers, people can die from having too many drugs. So that's not snitching. That's not the same thing. Okay. Uh, Miss Pickle asks, what is your favorite character to play when you're working on Dar Man? I like all the roles, to be honest with you. Um, but I do tend to like more of the fun roles, more of the comedic roles than I do the like super serious, dramatic ones. <laughs> uh, Orly says, I repeat a lot of the verses and it makes me feel better. Amazing. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. That, it, yeah, it does. It does that. It has a way of, it's like, it's like a medicine. Just pop some scriptures and you're, you're good. Just, you don't need to pop pills. You need to pop the scriptures. You know, you know, the, the Old Testament says that the word of God is health and healing to all your flesh. And I saw this happen firsthand. Um, when Timothy, my big boy, my 13 year old was in the neonatal, Nick, the neonatal intensive care unit and he was dying and it was, it was touch and go. You didn't know from one day to the next, if you, when you went to the hospital, if your child was still going to be alive. And I would sit there and his oxygen levels would be so low and he's on the ventilator and he can't breathe because he was born so small. He didn't even have branches in the lungs or the buds that form after them. So he, he just, he needed everything on the outside to help him. He was so little and small. He didn't even look human when he came out. He looked like a little bird and it was, he was see-through. You could see through his skin and we weren't allowed to touch him because you could break the skin open. It was so fragile, but his oxygen levels would drop and, and, and I would just sit and I would just read the scripture to him. I would read the scripture to him. And in the book of Psalms in the old Testament, it says the word of God is health and healing to all your flesh. And then I would over and over, I would read this other scripture from Psalms that said, he will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Just like the person uh, had to say the thing about, I don't have fear to be able to jump off the building every day, multiple times a day, I had to say and pray to him. He will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. He will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. And they gave him only a 10% chance of survival. The doctors told me the day I had him 90% chance he's going to die. So I know the scriptures work because I would see the oxygen levels just dropping, dropping. And then I would start to say the scriptures and I would see them rise. I could see that on the monitor. So it works. Whatever, whatever issues in life, it works. I'm going to be putting out a tiny little mini course called the three B's. Uh, you need to answer any question and solve any problems in life. And you know, one of the B's is the Bible. So fixes everything. Okay, Nicole, do you ride roller coasters? Yes, I do, but my big boy is scared of them, so we gotta get him unscared. He needs to do that scripture to get rid of unscared. Do you like being a Karen? Um, sometimes, sometimes it's kind of fun. Sometimes it's like, oh gosh. Okay, um, uh, can you sing? No, I mean, not pleasantly. <laughs> Catherine, in the Pizza Boy video, was the pizza vegan and gluten-free? You had a bite. So they had to get me a special pizza that was vegan and gluten-free, and we just put my special slice in the box with the regular pizza. And I tried to hold it in a way that you wouldn't know. I tried to make it blend in, even though it was so thin. The regular pizza was, like, thick, and mine was so thin, and I was trying to, like, hold it in a way where you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. <laughs> Yes, because I wasn't going to eat regular pizza. I'm sorry. I've been vegan 17 years <laughs> and gluten-free for, I don't know how many, less than that. Okay. When is Timmy's birthday? It's in December. Um, and Lena says, who is the funniest on set? Oh, good question. Funniest. Uh, Michael Vaccaro is pretty funny. Um, who else? Uh, gosh, Mare can be pretty funny, but she's got a little, a little sharpness, a little about her funniness. 
Um, sarcasm. She's got a little sarcasm about her. Um, I think that's that's who comes to mind right now. I'm sure there's others that are super funny too, but those are the two that come to mind. How was the collab with the royalty family, Physics asks. It was good. It was good. I, I wasn't, I, you know, I didn't have much interaction with them, but we were in the same scene together, but they were kind of preoccupied. I think, I don't know if they'd ever done like a shoot where they had to memorize lines and stuff. So there wasn't like a lot of chit chat between us because I could see that they were trying to concentrate on their lines and I didn't want to disturb them. Okay. There's a ton of new characters in Dar Man lately. Yeah, I've noticed that. Yeah, I just looked on IMDb the other day and it looked like there's been over 500 people who've been in the Dar Man series. So that's crazy. Okay, did you try to change your appearance to appeal to what Hollywood wanted you to look like before you started working for Darman videos? Yes, I did. I talk about that in my course. I certainly did. Okay, why was the Karen nice to the neighbor family and mean to the royalty family? Well, because she was a racist. What's your favorite thing about being in Darman videos? Um, I like the content. I like that I don't have to worry about what the script's gonna be about. Um, because I've been offered some pretty sketchy, sketchy scripts that you, let's just say you wouldn't want anyone to know that you were in it. <laughs> so I, I'm not even gonna say the, just saying the names of some of these scripts that I've been offered, no. Uh, yeah, the Leanne video, someone just did a like a spoof on that, the Leanne video. Uh, Danny says in all four years of high school, I don't understand your question. Uh, Seattle Green, I think you have seniority in the Dar Man crew. Well, not in the crew. Ruben was there since day one before I started. Um, and as far as the actors go, Ricky was there before me. I think Anjali was there before me. Maybe even Carl, God rest his soul, was there before me. Um, Timmy was born December 11th. Can you please call your son so we can see him? He'll, he'll come in here if he feels like it. I'm not going to try to make him come in here for, yeah. If he, he comes in, he comes in. How long were you on live? I typically go live for an hour on Sundays. How many teachers did you have in high school? I don't know. I didn't count. Okay, what is your and Tim's favorite TV show? Mine is The Simpsons. Uh, I'm not sure what his is. Timmy, what's your favorite TV show? Um, I don't know. He said he doesn't know. Uh, currently, I've been watching one called Family Reunion, and that's pretty funny. Okay, Timothy's birthday is the day after my brother, someone said. Uh, let's see. What was your experience like at Legoland? It was fun. It was not really my kind of thing, but seeing the kids have fun is fun. You know, as a parent, sometimes you just do certain things for your kids. Okay, uh, let's see. Your son's birthday is two days from my brother's, December 9th. What is your favorite building? I don't know if I have a favorite building. That's interesting. I've never thought about that. Check out Roblox Creation of Darman videos. They are well done. Okay, interesting. Okay, is there anybody who you asked a question earlier that I didn't get to? Yes, Miss Pickle, I do have a gluten intolerance. Oh, somebody else just sent me a little monetary gift. Thank you. Just popped up. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, about eight or nine years ago, I started to notice after I ate gluten, I would get a big belly. Um, hold on. You're just reminding me of something I want to write down. Belly. One of you guys reminded me of something else I needed to write down and I already forgot. Um, so yeah. Oh, let's see. Oh, thank you, Elena. Wow. Yes, I will. I've eaten cauliflower crust, but so I went to the doctors because now I've been experiencing like bloating problems where I have like a big belly after I eat and it's not only when I eat gluten. So he put me on a low FODMAP diet 
And I realized more than like half of what I eat is supposed to not be good for people if you have IBS. He's thinking I have IBS, which is irritable bowel syndrome, which gets you bloated after you eat. So, and I eat super healthy. Like yesterday I had fruit for a small fruit snack. And then I had another couple pieces of fruit and lunch. I just had some baked potatoes. Um, dinner, I just had like a salad and like some soup with like kale and carrots and celery and beans. Like, thank you, Derek. Like super healthy food. And then I and then I look like and then I look like I'm five months pregnant after I eat. So I've been trying to narrow down what the heck I can eat without looking like I have a big distended belly after I eat. So it's been really hard. Cause I'm like, I already have a limited diet being vegan, gluten free, and now being vegan, gluten free, low FODMAP, it makes it so there's only like <laughs> it feels like there's only like 10 things I can eat. So it's awful. Uh, let's see, Hannah, I bet the people who make fun of you for being slim are overweight themselves. Yes, Frank, I bet you're right because back when I had low self-esteem issues and I was overweight, I used to make fun of skinny people, but I secretly wanted to be one. So that is so true. So do not listen to people who are making fun of you for being too slim. Nine times out of 10, they're probably jealous. Okay, <laughs> Catherine, I would say, but I have to go to mass. Enjoy mass. Binks, thanks, you, thanks for coming. Okay, insects with Chaz. Do you feel bad on set during Karen rolls when you're mean? Yeah, it's a yucky feeling. It feels gross in your heart. It's, it's, it's not a good feeling. <sighs> it's not a good feeling. Uh, random, random rotten. You are beautiful. Thank you. Um, okay, so let's see. Catherine, have you ever tasted Jolly Bee? Um, is that a candy? I don't know what that is. It's good to eat what we love. You got one life, but it's not good to eat what you love if it's causing you abdominal discomfort and distended belly and you can't get your pants to button and your tummy hurts. So, um, I, I'm, I'm going to... I'm gonna start this new low FODMAP thing today. Pray for me, <laughs> it's so hard. Listen, on this low FODMAP diet, I can't have avocados anymore, I can't have mushrooms, I can't have corn, I can't have garlic, I can't have onions, I can't have watermelon, yes, my favorite fruit. I can't have mangoes, I can't have apples, I can't have asparagus, I can't have broccoli, I can't have cauliflower, and the list goes on and on and on and on. I can't have wheat, which I already was trying not to have. And on and on and on and on the list goes. There's like 50 things I used to eat that I now can't eat anymore. <laughs> Seattle said, what are you going to eat then? Air. No, <laughs> there are some things I can have. I can have grapes. I can have oranges. I can have strawberries. I can have sourdough bread in moderation. I can have celery in moderation. I can have carrots. I can have potatoes. I can have rice. <sighs> it's very sad. I'll let you know how it's going. Okay, do you have a favorite singer or pop artist? If so, who is it and which is your favorite song at the moment? NY Astolfo is asking me this. I don't have a favorite singer. I don't really listen to music all that much. I'm sorry that might disappoint some people, but I am like a nerd and I love learning and it's to your benefit. I listen to, instead of in my car listening to music, I listen to a lot of audiobooks. And so that way I have a lot of knowledge in my head and can answer your questions better than if I just listen to radio all day in the car. I figure 90% of these songs on the radio I've already heard multiple times when I'm places and when people are playing music. There's no need for me to listen to them 600 more times when I drive when I've already heard them before. Also, sometimes I like silence in the car so I can just let God download thoughts into me. Okay, Frank says he likes Lane, Lane Staley from Alice in Chains. I've heard of Alice in Chains, but I've never heard of that name. Um, but my son's favorite band, I do like some of their songs, so I'll, I'll give you that. I'll give you my son's favorite band. It's Imagine Dragons. 
Random Rotten. I'm from Minnesota originally, but I live in California. Okay, let's see. You can't have mushrooms, not even Mario mushrooms. Can't have mushrooms. It's so sad. I can't, that's like nothing left for me to eat. Oh, okay. Let's see. I wish I could be skinny because skinny people make fun of me because of how I look and how much I weigh. Oh my gosh, just please ignore the people who are making fun of you. They've got nothing better to do with their life than make fun of someone else, and they don't have a life. They need to get a life. So don't listen to the haters. Okay, someone said they're, uh, someone said they're from America. Okay, oh, let's see. The Rosalina fan said, you should tell Darman to do a skit based on me and my story. I was bullied because of my autism. And I'm a YouTuber who got bullied and have a BFF named Lily. You know, Dar told me last week, um, I was talking to Dar because we were doing a shoot. Did the shoot come out yet where, did you guys see the one yet where Dar pulls up in his new Cadillac SUV? I don't know if that one's out yet. But that day we were shooting, he was telling me, um, what is he telling me? <laughs> Where'd that thought go? Um, well, it had something to do with what you were asking. Uh, oh, okay. You said he should do a story on you. He said he once a week talks to um, kids in the range or whatever the typical age range who watch Darman videos. He talks to them and he finds out what their stories are to help like inspire him with some of the stuff. So I don't know how you get involved in that. Maybe you want to email the Darman people and say, how can we submit our story or be on the the sessions he does where he chats with people once a week? That's all I know. That's all I know. Okay, there should be one where this girl gets bullied for being a tomboy. That's a good one. We kind of did that with a supercar blondie though, right? The girl gets bullied for playing with cars. I don't remember what it was actually called because they mom wanted her to play with Barbie dolls and not cars. Cars are for boys, so it's kind of similar. Okay, hey Catherine, which is your favorite YouTuber? Oh my gosh. Well, it used to be Freely the Banana Girl. She's funny, she's a funny lady. Um, but lately I've been watching videos kind of just for research. So I've been watching YouTube videos. Um, uh, oh, see, Frank's answering questions for me that you guys are asking. Frank and Angela and certain people uh, remember stuff I said on other lives. So when you ask me here, sometimes they will answer. So you guys look, if I'm not getting to your question, look, sometimes the moderators will have an answer for you because they know what my answer is based on previous things. So where was I? What was I talking about? I don't know. See, what happens is I start to try to answer your questions, but then I start reading the stuff that comes up and the answer goes bye-bye because I'm now reading what you're writing. So forgive me whoever's question I started to answer but didn't. Um, actually, my hour is up. So I want to remind you guys that Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesdays, I post advice videos on my YouTube channel at 8 a.m. Fridays, I post a short, no, sorry. Thursdays, I post a short at 5 p.m. And Fridays, I what I'm trying to do, I don't know if you guys have noticed, Fridays, I've been trying to post videos related to my acting career <clears throat> and my entertainment career. So look for the special videos on Fridays at 8 a.m. My normal advice videos, um, Monday through Wednesday at 8 a.m. Thursdays is the short. Angela says they are awesome, please watch. And then I take Saturdays off. And here I am every Sunday at 8 a.m. Um, doing a live Q&A. Just so you know, I'm not sure if I will go live next Sunday. Oh, Floralie. Okay, thank you, Floralie. I'm not sure if I'll go live next Sunday because I'm supposed to be in Arizona on a family vacation. Um, yeah, we'll see. If the family's all asleep at 8 a.m. and I'm the only one that's up, I'll probably do it. I'll sneak out of the room and I'll do a Q&A for you. We'll see. Um, uh, but there will be people here holding down the fort for me, uh, taking care of things at the house. 
uh, I got several people going to be here holding down the fort. So everything's going to continue. M my videos will still be coming up when I'm on vacation because I've pre-edited them in advance. So everything should be, just be going the way it normally would. Okay, guys, I will see you next week. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.